All right, in this video, I'm just gonna go over some of the things I've done in my studio to customize it and make it perfect for my setup and maybe give you some tips that you can use on your own setups. So the main question I always get asked is how did I make the keyboard slider tray for under my desk? So I'll go over that one. And then I'll also talk about the gear holder and a couple of other little things that might give you some ideas on what you can do in your own space. So let's get right into the keyboard slider. So for the first few years of making YouTube videos, I had my keyboard up on the desk and then I had machine and I kind of moved things around and it was just kind of awkward. And I really wanted something under the desk that could pull out, be my keyboard, play for a while, slide it away and get it out of the way. And so I found a couple videos on YouTube. I'll put some links to them because they did things a little bit differently than I did. But what we'll do is we'll show you how we put this thing together. And the reason I like having the keyboard under the desk is because I've got all this other gear on the top of the desk. And what I used to find is if my keyboard was up too high, if I was playing for you know, 15, 20 minutes even, your arms just start to burn, your neck starts to burn, and it's super uncomfortable. I've also seen people who have a keyboard right here, and then they have their typing keyboard up above that. And I type way more than I play my, my piano keyboard, so I can't imagine the strain that I would feel if I was in that setup. So I bought these sliders on Amazon on recommendation of the guys who have posted videos on these on YouTube. So all you have to do is measure your keyboard, figure out exactly where you're gonna want the keyboard to slide out to. These keyboard sliders are special because they have these things that stick out and there's a whole bunch of keyboard sliders you can get from Home Depot and stuff, but they don't have these little nubs that stick out and that is essential for resting the keyboard on there. And I didn't want to screw into the bottom of the keyboard, so what I did is I took a little chunk of wood from a paint stir stick and then put Velcro on top, glued that on top of these little ledges, and then put Velcro on the underside of the complete control keyboard. Figure out exactly where you're going to want the keyboard to slide out to, screw some holes in the bottom of your desk, and then realize that you've got it wrong and make some adjustments. And so for me, it was a whole bunch of different adjustments. You know, I thought I had it where, where I wanted it and it was, didn't slide out far enough or wasn't low down enough or something like that. So just make all your adjustments and then keep repositioning it till you get it just perfect. The next piece of gear that I am going to recommend is this Odyssey laptop stand. So I picked these up at our local music store and the thing I found with them is they didn't go down low enough. So what I did is I got my neighbor who has an angle grinder to shorten them for me. So he cut both pieces of metal and then I put them back together and now they are at the perfect height so that they're not interfering with my, my studio speakers and my monitor, but they are the perfect height for pieces of gear like these synthesizers or the pod go over there. So those are not cheap and there are much cheaper alternatives. The benefit with these ones is that they're flat on the bottom so that other pieces of gear can slide right underneath it. I'll show you another piece of gear picked up off Amazon for at least half the price of these Odyssey ones, but the downside of them is that they aren't actually flat on the bottom. So my Juno here is kind of sitting up on these stands, but it is a perfect solution for me to have one synthesizer on the bottom and then a couple of synthesizers above that. I'll put a link to those in the description as well. Next, we've got the Studio Gear stand that sits on my desk. And I gotta say, I'm not a carpenter, but you know, I spent probably 80 bucks on some nice pieces of hemlock and stained these. And then all I did was figure out the measurements for my gear with a little gap for me to put some cables and stuff through the middle and then screwed it together and basically the gear in this case is kind of holding this thing all together. It's, it's a little bit hokey, but it works perfectly and it looks nice. And you can spend a lot of money on rack gear holders like this, or you could just make it yourself and kind of find the finish that works perfectly in your space. So the last one I'm gonna show you is a bit of a throw in. And the truth is with all of this gear, sitting at the studio for hours on end, gets really hard on your back. So I see a lot of people using standing desks and I just think it would be really hard for me to get a standing desk that would work with all the cables that are coming out of the back of this desk and then having to deal with speakers. And you know, if you have a standing desk that fits your speakers on the desk, then that might work a little bit better. I've got this gigantic monitor TV and I've got a video on this TV if you wanna check it out. It's just a 65 inch LCD TV. It's not a fancy monitor or anything like that. 
but it's perfect for my YouTube videos, but it gets really hard on my neck when I'm sitting here for long sessions. And so what I've done is I just take uh, a little end table, place it on my desk, and I've got myself a temporary standing desk. I like it, I can stand up, I can work on my big TV and reduce the neck strain and just move it and go back to normal whenever I need to start playing stuff or working on the pieces of gear. I will say, if you're wondering about this monitor, I've been using this now for almost two years and some people like to laugh at it and say, dude, your monitor is not big enough, you know, comments like that. For me, it works perfectly. I love having it for the YouTube videos and then being able to, you know, sit on the couch and continue working is also a huge benefit of this massive TV. So for me, it works, but I had to get it as low as I could possibly get it so that my neck wasn't looking up every time I was sitting down at the desk. And the very last thing I'll mention is my wood stands for my machine and for my push controllers. And these were made by Arts Wood Designs in Alberta, Canada. I'll put a link to him in the description, but he does have a big waiting list. So there you go, a bunch of tips. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions and I'd be glad to help you out. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.